so uh, when we got in, the boat was pretty much put together by the shore team, and they did an excellent job. They just needed a couple more touch-ups, but we went through a couple rig checks. Put a new runner in. New lifelines, new jack stays. Went through a full clean up and tidy out down the stairs and just made sure everything waterproof pretty much. Okay, next to Maximum, hold! Yeah, that's good. Alright, don't put them to the low side. Coming. Yeah. Then bring it to the boat. Uh, now we're at the toolbox. Well, the Lucky Program is always focused on, you know, we, we're here to, to have fun, basically, but also we want to do our very best, and um, Brian Earhart, the, the team principal, he's given us the resources to be able to, to make sure that we've got all the right equipment um, and the right preparation for all the events that we race in. The Lucky 72 right now is the ex Valamente. It's a full race boat, but obviously full carbon. Uh, lots of new uh, sails on board. All the winch systems and, and hydraulic systems and uh, electronic systems and everything has all been uh, serviced and, and overhauled uh, during the winter months. And the boat's in A-grade shape uh, in readiness for, for this event. Um, so the overall course, Isle of Wight, starting area, right and so on. We have the Portland Bill Point. Then we have Start Point, Lizard, Land's End, Rock, and back to the Isles of Scilly. As a navigator, my, my, my primary concern and responsibility is, is the safe navigation of the vessel and delivering the crew from the starting line to the finish line. I'm not seeing anything in the routing that predicts more than 10 knots of breeze from the time that we start until we're at the Lizard. Okay. Very light in the first 18 hours and quite a chess game. Um, after that, we move into placement of our boat relative to the fleet, um, trying to make sure that we're being both playing offense and defense on the water. Uh, in terms of the collateral areas, would be anything associated with weather downloads, weather routing, um, any sort of instrumentation, responsibilities, keeping any, any, basically anything with an amp or a volt running on the boat, and um, the general overall strategy of where are we going to go uh, is, my, is, is, is my job as a navigator. The cutoff flow to the north, west of the Fast Net Rock, is going to be the primary weather feature that's basically going to dominate two thirds of the race. It is moving very slowly to the east. And there's a series of cold fronts that are spinning off of that, which will create shifts and a little bit of showers in the later part of our course. Again, two days, four hours is at 100% polars is our slowest routing. One day, 20 hours is 100% polars on our, on our fastest weather source. The fast net race is a very dynamic course. Um, you can almost think of it as being three-dimensional. Uh, the coastal sailing along the southern, the southwest coast of England uh, can be very tricky, very sticky with a lot of passing lanes, a lot of ladder rungs. Um, so you really hope to not throw away the race in the first quarter of it.
um, and it's about team building as well. It's it's always nice to bring a, a team of new people together and work with them, and you know, by the end of the race, it's um, you know, it's a well oiled machine. So it's a lot of fun. With the smaller boats uh, before us, means that by the time we get through to the Narrows, leaving the Isle of Wight, it gets very congested and there's a lot of traffic, and so. So that's going to be a priority for us, leaving the Isle of Wight, is to try and keep clear lanes and try and stay out of the traffic because it uh, uh, can be actually quite dangerous. By and large, for over half of the race, I mean, you can't turn your back on it, uh, particularly in, the, in that coastal element with tides and currents that, that move this much. It's really important in the Fastnet race to make sure that you're capitalizing where you, where you can uh, and also resting where you need to uh, and not getting really being careful of any sort of sleep deprivation. Um, so there basically won't be any sleep between the starting line and to land's end, the entire coastal, the entire coastal feature, uh, just because it's so critical to our placement for the long reach out to Fastnet. Do I expect to sleep a, a tremendous amount? No, uh, but I, I know where I can and I know that it's important to get in the bunk. Uh, you know, you've got to be rested to be thinking properly. Pretty weird because it starts off very intense, and then I reckon with this race, the intensity level will just stay up. I'm pretty sure this is going to be a pretty tight competition with the other 72s and the other boats around us as well. So I'm pretty sure it's going to be yeah, balls to the wall. <laughs>
a lot of days of, of work in the yard for a day of sailing. Um, but, you know, what I love the most is, is when the crew comes together and, and uh, we share some fun out on the, on the ocean and we, not everything always goes to plan and, you know, you really see uh, the good and bad in people and I think we've got a lot of good in the, in the team that we have on the boat and that's the stuff when you go through a challenge that, that brings you together as a team. Uh, that's the stuff that keeps you coming back. I think, you know, you, you get a challenge rise to the challenge and sometimes you win, sometimes you lose, but in the end you, you've had a good crack with a, with a fun bunch of guys and you know, it's an awesome feeling.